Another cup of Maxwell House coffee, George? Sure, pour me a cup, Gracie. Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. And that's good, too. Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, our postman Mel Blank, Sharon Douglas, and the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee-drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House, with extra flavor in the blend because of choice Latin American coffees skillfully combined. Extra flavor in the cup because Radiant Roast develops the full flavor of every coffee bean. And the result is that today, more people buy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. As we look in at the Burns' home this morning, we find George and Gracie discussing the couple who have just moved in next door. What do you think of them from what you've seen, George? Well, it's hard to say. We've, we've only had a glimpse. The girl looks very pretty. Prettier than me, huh? Oh, don't be silly. To me, you'll always be the prettiest girl in the whole world. Oh, bless your little heart. What do you think of the fellow? Well, he's kind of handsome. Handsomer than me, huh? Oh, bless your little heart. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bless it. Of course, I do know a few things about them just from watching the furniture and stuff they moved into the house. For instance, they're, uh, they're very affectionate. You can tell that from the furniture? Oh, sure, from the love seat. <laughs> Only one side of it's worn down. I see what you mean. And naturally, I know that he's an important man, somebody with a lot of influence, maybe the son of a senator or even a personal friend of the president. How do you know that? Well, they've got a new refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, must be a big shot. Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope she doesn't turn out to be the borrowing kind of neighbor, but she'll probably borrow the mix master and keep it for weeks. I didn't know we owned a mix master. We don't. I borrowed it from Francis Fowler last night. <laughs> well, uh, maybe the new neighbor will be more considerate. Oh, I'll answer it, dear. Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Here's your mail. Oh, thanks, Mr. Postman. How are you today? Frisky as a colt, Mrs. Burns. <laughs> On mornings like this, I drink in the air and expand my chest to its fullest extent. Only when the street is deserted, of course. Only when the street is deserted? Yes. I wouldn't want the buttons to pop from my uniform and wound a bystander. Oh, you're so thoughtful, Mr. Postman. Um, my husband and I have been talking about the new couple next door. Have you met them yet? Yes, I've spoken to them. Poor, unfortunate young people. What a tragedy. A tragedy? Two days ago, they hadn't a care in the world. And then yesterday, it happened. Why didn't somebody warn them? What happened? They got married. <laughs> oh, but Mr. Postman, all marriages aren't like yours. You're not happy because you're henpecked. Not henpecked, Mrs. Burns. I'm buzzard battered. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Postman, there, there must have been a time when you didn't feel that way. Yes, there was. When I first married Bertha, I said, I'll make good for her sake. I'll show her the stuff I'm made of. Oh, and did you show her? No, she took me apart and found out for herself. <laughs> well, goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. <laughs> Oh, George. Yes, dear? The postman just told me some exciting news. Those new neighbors of ours are newlyweds. They just married yesterday. On their honeymoon, huh? Yeah, isn't that sweet? We must make everything as romantic for them as possible. I know. Tonight, open the window beside your bed and sleep on your back. <laughs> that will make it romantic for them? Well, when you sleep on your back, you make a noise just like Niagara Falls. <laughs> 
It's, it's not just surroundings that make a honeymoon romantic. We spent hours in a little hotel near, near Kansas City stockyards, the Packing House Plaza. <laughs> well, it was romantic, wasn't it? Well, of course it was, darling. <laughs> Remember the night the big old cow walked through our room? Yeah. I told you to put your mother on a different floor. <laughs> George. I was talking about a cow from the stockyard. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. That was a swell honeymoon, even if it was a broken-down hotel. Yeah, you know, that was the first time I heard you sing. You sang in the bathtub. And it's brave and old boy. Yeah, I oh, always love to sing. yes. <laughs> and after your bath, you caught a cold walking back to our room. <laughs> Three dollars double. That was some hotel. Oh, look, George. The honeymooners next door are, are in the dining room where we can watch them. Hmm? He's putting his arm around her. Gracie, surely you're not going to peep at them. Of course not. I'm going to take a good look. <laughs> I'll see you later. Oh, I suppose it is kind of wrong of me to spy on them like this. But everyone says, love thy neighbor. And how can I love them unless I investigate them? <laughs> Come in. Hi, Gracie. What are you doing over there by the window? Oh, a pair of newlyweds just moved in next door, Bill. I've been, well, I've been kind of watching them. Gracie, you can't stand in the window that way, spying on a newly married couple. Shame on you. Why? Because you're blocking my view. Move over. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me, Bill. Stand right here. Look. Oh, they're just sitting down to breakfast. He's holding her chair. Isn't that romantic? Some romance. He's alone with a chair and a gorgeous doll, and look which one he holds. Well, just the same, I wish George were thoughtful enough to hold my chair. Oh, look. Now he's kissing her. Gracie, doesn't George ever kiss you at the breakfast table? Are you kidding? He won't, he won't put his lips near anything that isn't a four-and-a-half-minute egg. <laughs> All he does is sit there and read his paper. Well, why don't you try kissing George? I did twice. But he wouldn't put the paper down. Once I kissed the crossword puzzle, and the other time, Donald Duck. Believe me, you got the best two out of three. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gracie, you know that groom over there does seem very attentive. Look, now he's buttering her toes. Yes, and now he's holding it while she nibbles at it. Yeah. Oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah. Bill. Why don't you get married and settle down? Wouldn't you like to butter toast for a little wife of your own? No, no thanks, Gracie. I'd rather do it for a girl I'm just friends with. <laughs> Bill, you, you mean that's more romantic? Well, no, but it's nice to know her old man is paying for the butter. Oh, <laughs> Well, I'm sorry, Gracie, but marriage to me is just nothing. And speaking of just nothing, I hear your husband coming downstairs. <laughs> Well, you better leave, Bill. I want to see if there's any romance left in George. Maybe if I handle it right, he'll act just like that groom. Well, I doubt it, Gracie, but good luck. So long. Mm -hmm. uh, breakfast ready yet? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's on the table, darling. Good. Uh, dearest. What? I'm about to sit down. <laughs> Well? Well, would you hold my chair for me? What for? You can't miss it. <laughs> Sit you down. Yes, dear. George. Now what? Butter my toast for me. Butter it yourself. You got a broken arm? <laughs> George Burns, I demand that you butter my toast. Okay. There. Now, hold it up and I'll nibble at it. <laughs> Are you nuts? No, no. It's fun if the husband holds the toast and the wife nibbles at it. What do we do with the next piece? Throw it in the bathtub and bob for it? <laughs> oh, George Burns, you have no romance in your soul. I guess. Come in. Good morning, all. Oh, it's good morning some, Meredith. George is upstairs. Oh, uh, watching something through the window there, Gracie? Well, yes, Meredith. I've been sitting here watching the young couple next door. They just got married. Oh, I wish I could have that kind of life. 
Golly, you mean you and George aren't married? <laughs> well, of course we're married. I didn't mean that. It's just that men are so changeable. The longer they know you, the less they care about you. Oh, I don't believe that, Gracie. Oh, don't tell me about men. When a man first caught you, the fire in his heart burns as brightly as the fire in a furnace. Then along comes Father Time and John L. Lewis, and they both go out. <laughs> But, Gracie, honestly, that's not true of all men. Now, you take old Walter Bunker back in my hometown of Mason City, Iowa. Why, he's just as kind and thoughtful and loving to marry Edith today as he was 20 years ago when he first started to court her. Really, married him? Absolutely. Walter's a plumber, and goodness knows he's busy. But every day he brings... <laughs> every day he brings Mary Edith a gift. You know, little things he finds in drains. <laughs> Thoughtful man. Walter even composes poetry about Mary Edith. Why, I remember one little bit of verse went like this. Oh, Mary Edith, I love you more than a modern rust-proof galvanized sewer. Oh, how sweet. I'm glad you told me about Walter and Mary Edith. It restores my faith in men to know that after 20 years of married life, some husbands can still be kind and thoughtful. Oh, Walter and Mary Edith aren't married. They are? No. Walter's been courting her for 20 years, but she hates the sight of him. <laughs> oh, oh, I see. Well, I'll be running along. I uh, hope you've changed your opinion of men, Gracie. I hope you realize that not all of us are rude jerks. No, some of you are very polite. Goodbye, Meredith. <laughs> Nevada, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra. That song you're playing about the state of Nevada makes me want to get out my traveling shoes. Well, I don't wonder, Bill, for Nevada has really spectacular scenery that's really worth traveling far to see. Yes, that state seems to have everything in it, Meredith. Lofty snow-capped mountains, immense sagebrush deserts, fertile green valleys where figs and almonds and pomegranates grow. And don't forget the world-famous lakes, Bill. The deep blue Lake Tahoe and the pyramid. It's certainly no wonder Nevada is so well-loved a part of our American scene. And I can't help thinking, too, how it's no wonder that Maxwell House coffee has become so much a part of our American scene. For in this nation of coffee lovers, the extra flavor richness of Maxwell House has made so many millions of friends that today it's bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee. You see, this coffee that more people prefer is a blend of premium Latin American coffees, each chosen for its individual flavor contribution. Manizales for mellowness. Medellins for richness. Other choice Latin American coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. The result is true flavor harmony in a cup of coffee. That's why Northeast, South, and West, the nation's favorite is Maxwell House. Coffee that's deeply satisfying, always good to the last drop. Are you 
you still at that window watching those newlyweds? Yes, dear. The husband just came home for lunch. Come here. I want you to see something. I think it might give you an idea. Okay. What? You see, first he takes a bite of food and then he kisses her. And then he takes another bite of food and he kisses her again. Doesn't that give you an idea? Well, sure, but you didn't have to go through all this. No. Yeah, I know it was lunchtime. Make me a pot roast sandwich. <laughs> George Burns, I'm ashamed of you. Here I stand before you, desirable and available. And you've got your mind on pot roast. Well, it's very nourishing. Pot roast gives a fellow energy. Strength. Oomph. Oh. <laughs> but you, you couldn't possibly use any more oomph. You're loaded already. Kiss me. Okay. What do you want on your pot roast? Mustard or relish? You didn't like that kiss? George, I want you to kiss me like you used to. Oh, come on. Try it again. Turn the clock back five years. All right. Well? Better turn it back ten years. Okay. I'm going to kiss you just like I did ten years ago. There. Do I hear 15? What's the matter with you? That's exactly the way I kissed you on our wedding night. You kissed me like that when I was a blushing bra? Sure. Wonder what I was blushing about. <laughs> well, I've had enough of this. I'm going down to the office. Goodbye. Maybe it's my fault that George isn't as lovey-dovey as the man next door. Maybe that bride has something I haven't got. <laughs> what a ridiculous thought. <laughs> Still, there's no harm in finding out. I'll go over there and snoop around a little. <laughs> See what this bride has got that makes her husband so much more attentive than mine. Maybe it's her beauty secrets or her clothes. Yes? Oh, well, hello. I'm Mrs. Burns from next door. I, um, I felt it my duty to come over and warn you about the Snoopy women in this neighborhood. Uh, Snoopy women, Mrs. Burns? Yes. Now, uh, take Mrs. Snevely, for instance. Uh, she's nosy enough to ask you how much you paid for that dress you're wearing. 1875, wasn't it? Uh, no, it only cost 15. Oh, well, keep it to yourself. It's none of her business. <laughs> well, she must really be nosy. Oh, she's nothing compared to Mrs. Fowler, two houses down. That brazen woman would even ask you if you dye your hair. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> Why, no, I don't. I thought not. That Mrs. Fowler has some nerve. <laughs> yes, hasn't she? Well, the worst snoop of all is Mrs. Morton across the street. She'll even want to know what dentist makes your teeth. Why, my teeth happen to be my own. Oh. You have a very nice figure, too. Also my own. <laughs> oh. Why would they ask me these things, Mrs. Byrne? Well, to find out if it's expensive clothes and beauty secrets that make your husband so attentive. Aren't they awful? Oh, well, they certainly are. My Jim loves me for myself alone. Oh. Well, that washes that up. <laughs> what? Oh, nothing. I, um, I saw your husband from the window this morning. You did? Mm -hmm. Oh, isn't he a dream, Mrs. Burns? Isn't he just terribly handsome and that glorious physique? Yes. <sighs> My husband's the mental type. <laughs> Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you, my dear. <laughs> oh, you should have seen Jim in his uniform. He was a captain in the Marines. Well, George did his bit, too. Oh, really? Mm. What was his rank? Air raid warden, junior grade. <laughs> oh, he, he was wounded, but he didn't get the Purple Heart. He sat on his flashlight. <laughs> Well, I'm sure he was very... Oh, oh, there's my phone. Pardon me, Mrs. Burns. Hello? Oh, Jim, darling. I was worried about my lover boy. You haven't called me for ten whole minutes. Are you at the office? What are you doing? You just had a customer. What was his name? Where was he from? Was he nice? Did he buy anything? How much? Oh, how wonderful. 
Bye now. Uh, do you always ask your husband so many questions? <laughs> oh, yes. Jim loves for me to take an interest in everything he does. He does, huh? Oh, yes, most husbands do. It makes them feel so much closer to their wives. Hmm, maybe that accounts for something. Oh, I beg your pardon? Oh, not at all, nothing, nothing. Well, this has been a lovely visit, but I must be running along now. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye, Mrs. Vernon. Oh, be interested in everything your husband does, and he'll adore you, huh? All right, George, here comes your interested wife. <laughs> Oh, darling, you're back at last. Where have you been? <laughs> to, the, to the office. Oh, tell me about your trip. <laughs> My trip? Yeah, did you take a bus or a streetcar? Took a bus. What bus did you take? Same one I take every day, the red bus. <laughs> Was it bright red? Fairly bright. Oh, what a colorful life you lead. Oh, dashing all over town in a bright red bus. <laughs> yeah, colorful. Tell me about it. Was the conductor nice? Fine fellow. Never had my transfer punch neither. <laughs> Where did you get off the bus? At Fifth Street. Fifth Street? Oh, that's so far away. No, it isn't. <laughs> Don't ever go as far as Sixth Street, George. I couldn't bear it. <laughs> Okay, okay. Then you left the office and came home, huh? Well, yes. Did you take a bus or a streetcar? Bus. What bus did you take? The same bus I took before. The bright red one? The bright red one. Oh, what a colorful life you lead. Dashing all over town in a bright, bright red, red bus. bus. Yeah. <laughs> Gracie, what in the world? Did you stop anywhere before you came home? Stopped at the cigar store. Did you buy some cigars? Oh, yes. How many? Three. How much did you pay for them? A dime. <laughs> did you smoke one? Yeah. Oh, George, you live so dangerously. <laughs> this is murder. What, what are you going to do now that you're home? I thought I might sit down for a while. In a chair or on the sofa? On the bright red bus. I'm getting out of here. Oh, darling. Don't go as far as 6th Street. I couldn't bear it. Goodbye. I wonder if I overdid it. So that's why I came over to talk to you, Bill. You're supposed to know all about women. And believe me, I've got a problem with Gracie. Oh, nonsense, George. Just show her who's boss. After all, who earns the living? Who pays the rent? Who buys the food? Who... You have got a problem, haven't you? <laughs> Darn right. Ever since she started watching that couple next door, she's been oh, acting very... Oh, of very... course, George. That's it. She wants you to act like a newlywed. A newlywed? Well, sure. Leap in the door, pick her up in your arms, and scorch her with burning kisses. You want me to do that? Well, in your case, limp in and shake hands. <laughs> okay, comedian, if you don't want to help me. Well, I am trying to help you, George. Don't all women like love and affection? I guess so. Well, Gracie wants it, too, if she's a normal woman. I'll try it anyway. <laughs> Boy, Now, make with the lovey-dovey stuff. You know, that gooey talk. Oh, I'm not good at that. Oh, it's easy, George. Look, you be Gracie, I'll be you, and I'll show you how. Who does who of? <laughs> Look, Bill. Now, come on, George. <laughs> Try it. Who is the greatest, biggest, handsomest Mexicans in the whole world? Bill. I know, but you're supposed to say George. Oh, fine. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you another lead. Yeah, a little lead. If a itty, fat lead, give me yes. that. If itty-bitty mamakins will puck her up, daddikins will give her something yummy-yummy. <laughs> well? Yes, a great big cup of Maxwell House coffee. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, dirty. Oh. <laughs> now, right away, you've got her, George, because that's the sweetest thing you can say to a woman. They know that Maxwell House is tops. Appetizing, rich, full-bodied, and mellow. Coffee at its full-flavored best. Good to the last drop. But, Bill, I can't say that. Oh, sure you can. It's absolutely true. That's why more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House than any other brand of coffee in the world. I mean, I can't do that baby talk stuff. Still, if I pour it on thick enough, maybe I can cure her. I'll try it, Bill. Good. I'll talk real mushy. That ought to make me repulsive, huh? <laughs> well, with the start you've got, how can it miss? <laughs> so long, comedian. Good luck, newlywed. <laughs> Why, George, you're back so soon. You didn't stay long. Great Big Daddykins got, uh, got lonesome for his itty bitty mommikins. <laughs> From now on, Daddykins won't ever leave his mommikins again. He's just gonna stay home and smother her with kisses. Mm. <laughs> this is wonderful. We'll sit on the sofa all snuggly wuggly, and Daddykins will give mommikins oodles of great big kisses. <laughs> Does ums like it? Well, I love it, dear, but right now we have to get dressed to go out to dinner. Daddikins isn't hungry. But Mamakins is. <laughs> then Daddikins will feed her on great big kisses. <laughs> but after dinner, I'm meeting the girls and we're going to a movie. Oh, no. Daddikins can't spare Mamakins. But it's a Charles Boyer movie and I'm dying to see it. Does you love Charlikins more than Daddikins? Well, no. Then kiss but... Daddikins. <laughs> we'll just sit here and we'll kiss all night and all day tomorrow and all the next oh, day. Oh, but and... tomorrow I have a beauty shop appointment. I can't let my hair go any longer. Daddikins will singe it off with burning kisses. <laughs> you, you, you mean we're, we're going to stay home from now on and just. That's right, just. <laughs> isn't squared? No, isms isn't. Well, Daddikins is making like a newlywed. Well, I, I, I liked you better the way you were before. Honest Mommikins? Oh, don't call me Mommikins again, unless you want a great big push in the face. <laughs> okay, Grace. Oh, well, that's better. Now, let's go out to dinner the way we'd planned. Good. Get my coat, will you? Get it yourself. You're not crippled. <laughs> George, you're the most adorable thing. Oh, Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one brand of coffee. Always good to the last drop. Well, oh, come on, Gracie, I'm hungry. Oh, oh, George, those newlyweds have invited us to their house for dinner. Oh, no. no. I'm not going to eat at any bride's cooking. Okay, I'll cook dinner for you myself. Let's go to the newlyweds. Good night. <laughs> oh, goody, goody, jello pudding tonight. It tastes like grandma's only more so. You ain't kidding, that's right. And, and just, just as jello, jello six delicious, delicious locked in flavors day. can't be beaten. So the, the proof of jello pudding's, pudding's in the eating. The Jell-O twins are hard to find, but keep on looking in your store. When sugar shortages are over, there'll be more. Just the taste of Jell-O pudding or of Jell-O and you know. It's the one and only J-E-L-L-O. Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. And now stay tuned to this station because Bird's Eye Open House, starring Dinah Shore, is coming on in just a second. Dinah's special guest tonight is Groucho Marx. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.